The Chinese last month unveiled the world's first digital currency from a major power. The island launching one of the world's first central bank-backed digital currencies in October. China has created its own form of digital currency. President Biden ordered the Treasury Department to consider creating a government-regulated digital dollar. And now the U.S. is looking into creating its own digital dollar. Oh boy, do we have some interesting things to talk about in today's video. This actually might be a surprise to quite a few people, although when you really think about it, it doesn't seem so far out of place, especially since tech technology is so prominent in our lives. I'm talking about the feds wanting a CBDC, also known as a central bank digital currency, a US digital dollar, or even what some people might know of as a Fed coin. Now I know a lot of questions come to mind when you hear the words digital dollar, like will it be a crypto? Is it anonymous? Is it going to replace cash? And don't we already have digital money? These are just a few questions I'll be exploring in today's episode and why I believe the feds will be be moving towards digital money and most likely enforcing it here on our country. Now guys, before we start, depending on how old you are, take a moment to think back about the last time you spent cash and the last time you pressed the like button. Now for most, it probably was a while ago. So let's make the change and tap the like button for the YouTube algorithm as it lets me know you wanna see more videos like this. But in all seriousness, for most millennials and Gen Z, it probably isn't that often that you spend cash, especially since we have the option on our phones to send payments instantly with with no fees. Apps like Apple Pay, Venmo, Zelle, and even Cash App have quickly taken over the role of cash in our society. I mean, for goodness, we even have cryptocurrency as a means of payment. Have you also noticed that there's been a slowdown in restaurants accepting cash as payment? I started to notice a surge in cashless restaurants during the pandemic. Not only was it a way to minimize the spread of germs, it also reduced the risk of getting robbed. Even our Federal Reserve was quarantining dollars it received from other countries before it recirculated them back into the US. This trend towards a cashless society is is no longer just a theory. Just 19% of purchases were made in 2020 with cash, down from 26% the year before. 10 years earlier, the use of cash was actually closer to 30%, and the decline is seen across all age groups. Among those aged 35 to 44, for example, the use of cash dropped from 32% in 2016 to 16% of purchases in 2021, according to the Fed. Those 65 and older also reported using cash on just over one quarter of their purchases, down from about one third in 2016. So so clearly the use of cash is on a decline, but is it truly possible to outright get rid of it? Well, in my opinion, it would be quite difficult. It would also give the central government complete access and control over our funds. And I know to most people that is just not acceptable. I mean, think about it for a minute. Going to have a garage sale on Sunday? Well, get ready to pay income tax on your $80 you made because it's tracked. Just sold your used couch on Facebook Marketplace for $300? Well, don't forget that Uncle Sam is waiting for those taxes. And as of 2019, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corp estimates that 7.1 million American households still do not have an account with a bank or a credit union. And now that's equal to about 5.4% of all U.S. households. And while that appears to be a record low, it's still a large chunk of the population that would be left out of a cashless society. Some people just truly don't trust the government or banks with their money, and I think that's totally fine. I even have this quote from a senior analyst at the American Civil Liberties Union who explains the bottom line is that the technocratic dream of a cashless society is a vision in which we discard what is left of the anonymity that has characterized urban life since the dawn of modernity and our freedom from the power of centralized companies like banks. I mean, let that resonate with you. With this quote in mind, removing cash from our ecosystem would just cause a whole slew of problems for our economy, inevitably disrupting who can actually hold on to digital currency. Now, if it's the feds that hold on to it, and the people who just have access to it, it would most likely fail, as the feds can't really handle 300 million new customers all at once to be in charge of. And this would most likely crumble the infrastructure and system put in place by banks. I mean, we just outright wouldn't need them as a middleman anymore. People would literally just be holding onto their money in a digital wallet controlled and regulated by the government. We also wouldn't even need to deposit our money into banks as you would have a digital wallet on our phone. And this would screw up the lending business and 
put many banks into retirement. Now, this is just a few theories I believe would need to be evaluated before the feds actually removed cash from circulation. Now, obviously the core concept of losing your privacy is extremely important, but I don't think that matters as much to the feds anymore. I mean, truly a cashless society is not impossible and even becomes more real as time moves on, but I just can't see it happening anytime soon in our life. Now, the thought of having an actual digital dollar while also having cash in circulation is a much stronger possibility than one replacing the other. And if you check the website of the Federal Reserve, you can actually see that they're already exploring the potential benefits and risks of a CBDC. They even raise the question themselves as to whether or not it should replace paper currency. They go on to state how they are committed to ensuring the continued safety and availability of cash and how they are considering a CBDC as a means to expand safe payment options, not to reduce or replace them. You see, CBDCs do, however, offer some real use case. They could easily improve on an already safe and efficient US domestic payment system. This would easily create a way to transfer money faster and cheaper than the current methods we use now. Similar to the use cases cryptocurrency offers and even replacing the international payment system we call SWIFT. On the other hand though, the feds also acknowledge that a digital currency has certain risks and raises a variety of important policy questions, including how it might affect financial sector market structures, the cost and availability of credit, the safety and possibility of hacks, and the intended result of monetary policy. Now, we also know that if it replaces the dollar, then your privacy or our privacy and anonymity would go right out the window. And unfortunately, I don't think that raises is too much concern to the feds. I mean, think about it. CBDCs would obviously be designed to prevent money laundering, which means they would need to verify the identity of every single person who uses the technology to keep track of every single payment. The government having the power to control all the money in the economy also raises some red flags, as we would inevitably lose some of our freedoms, such as privacy. Even with known risks around centralized digital currency, it hasn't stopped the feds from dabbling in the space. And as of August 29th, 9th of 2022, the Federal Reserve updated their FedNow service timing to mid-2023. Now, what does that actually mean? Now, you see, the FedNow service will be a new instant payment service to enable financial institutions of every size and in every community across the U.S. to provide safe and efficient instant payment services in real time, around the clock, every day of the year, which is an incredible concept similar to what cryptocurrency is. The difference is through financial institutions participating in the FedNow service, businesses and individuals will be able to send and receive instant payments conveniently. And recipients will have full access to funds immediately, giving them greater flexibility to manage their money and make time-sensitive payments. And the difference is, one is centralized and one is decentralized. And also keep in mind, if you've ever sent or received an international payment, you would know that it's quite an expensive transaction that can only be done during business days. So it's actually solving some pretty big problems we have right now. And when FedNow actually does launch, the money would flow from the sender to the bank through the Fed service and then to the receiver's bank and into the receiver's wallet. I believe this will be similar to Zelle in regards to fast and free transfers, but it will be able to send much bigger amounts all around the globe at any given time for a fraction of the cost. Another reason I believe the Feds will enforce a digital dollar soon is because surprisingly, they are kind of late to the game. Believe it or not, they won't be the first country to create a centralized digital dollar. Around 60 CBDCs are in the works worldwide, and the Bahamas retail currency sand dollar is also making world-beating strides. PwC ranked the top 10 retail CBDC initiatives around the world based on project maturity, and the sand dollar took the top spot. You see, the sand dollar is the digital version of the Bahamian dollar, and like cash, sand dollar is issued by the central bank of the Bahamas through authorized financial institutions. The sand dollar allows greater flexibility and accessibility for residents that want to participate participate in financial services via either a mobile phone application or using physical payment cards to access a digital wallet. It will also provide an excellent record of income and spending, which can be used as supporting data for micro loan applications, which means you have no privacy. It's all going to be tracked either for your benefit or probably not for your benefit. Now, China, of course, is also making progress towards the CBDC. And over the past several years, China has been steadily making progress towards a digital renminbi and 
now seems posed to become the first major economy to launch an official central bank digital currency. As I said before, a centralized currency would remove the privacy associated with physical cash, which is exactly what China wants for its people. Now, it would allow them to more closely watch both individual transactions and the powerful Chinese private financial technology sector. And I also wouldn't be surprised if they were actually able to lock people out of their money, which they were doing during uh, the pandemic and when they're having these riots, which we've talked about in another video, they're able to change the apps on people's phones that tested positive for the virus and they were able to turn people red and stop them from traveling. So to freeze people out of their money doesn't seem that far off. Regardless, lawmakers are pushing the Federal Reserve to move swiftly towards issuing a digital dollar to combat steps from China and others they say could one day threaten the US status as the global reserve currency. So this US digital dollar goes far beyond the American people. It's much bigger than you might have thought, and it would truly influence how the rest of the world uses money, which means the longer the Fed's wait, the longer they are letting other countries shape standards for national digital currencies, and the popularity of the US dollar could be diminished. Now, all in all, Jerome Powell has made it clear he's not in a rush. And last year, a reporter asked Jerome Powell whether he was worried that the US was falling behind countries like China, and he replied, I think it's more important to do this right than to do it fast. But with that being said, guys, definitely let me know your opinions on CBDCs down below, and I'll try to reply to your comments. Otherwise, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.